Hey, what is up, motherfuckers? Welcome to episode two of the SNM podcast. Squibble here. I do gotta say, there was a lot of heavy editing in this episode, so it kind of at the end just dwindles off and fades out. We were experimenting on how to record the podcast, and this was just one experiment, and we learned okay, not that anymore. But uh, the audio quality is all over the fucking place. But it's still an interesting uh, episode, an interesting topic, so. I figured we'd drop it anyway. We are getting our shit together. We have already uh, banked a couple more episodes, and they sound way better than this. So stick the fuck around, all right? Don't leave us already. So enjoy it. Rate and review the podcast. And suck my dick. Let's go. Famcast Media. Bitch. Welcome to the S&M Podcast. Quibble and Mad Max. What? What? The name is not my bad. Keep my circle tight. Spitting up that verbal light to shed upon the vagabond who's searching for some more to life. Black. Now approaches the wandering Jew. I'm taking some bumps and lacing some blunts, and I'm just smoking this sauntering. Here we go. What up, bro? Uh, well, we finally got a fucking name. Yeah, yes, we do, which I think is. Uh, I think it's a good name. I think it definitely, uh, it speaks to what we're going for. It's clever and it's, you know, again, it, it, it's, uh, topical. Yeah. And people might, uh, in the beginning <laughs> might be like, what the fuck is this podcast? Uh, this is going to be some kinky underground dark shit, but, uh, I got to give full props to the homie D rotten. That's, uh, still be, that's my, my homie D rotten came up with the name. Uh, I talked right. talk to him. I talked to him earlier today, and uh, we, we, were, we were coming up with some shit. And then he just hit me with, "How about S and M?" I'm like, "Oh shit!" And then uh, Mad Max added the underground to it, so I think it's just go straight S and M. That is definitely we are going to be attracting a very specific audience. Which, at a certain point, I'm not necessarily against it, but <clears throat> that is not really what we are going for. So, so let me ask you something. <laughs> I feel like this is a good. You know, it just popped into my head. I was looking at some shit. I seen uh, Funk Master Flex, Funk Master Flex Night, Funk Master Flex Night. He's fucking apparently lifted the ban on Takashi Six Nine. He's gonna start playing his music again because, as he put it, snitching is now acceptable in hip hop. And so he doesn't feel he's responsible to, like... He made a whole post about it. I didn't read the whole thing, but that was the gist of it. I didn't so, even know that he was, like, on this crusade to ban 6 9 I didn't even know that. Well, for, well, okay, so for a period, everybody that was New York-related, I think Academics was one of them, and Funk Flex for a bit, and... Well, well, but so it wasn't so much about Funk Flex is why I was bringing it up. The reason I was... Oh, jeez, excuse me. The reason why I was bringing it up is because I wanted to know, like, what do you think the overall, like, like, what is the theme or the mood of hip hop right now? Because we know where underground, we know where the underground is at. But do you think that, like, do you think that it's kind of taken that direction where it's basically like, are we that far from the roots, I guess is what I'm asking. Well, where you could just, like, snitch and be mad successful? Basically, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, six, nine, well, six nine was supposed to be the exception. You know what I mean? But now yeah. there's all kinds of shit going on where, like, I haven't, I follow no jumper on Instagram, so I see the updates. But like, I don't know what the fuck happened. But Young Thug and his whole crew got hemmed up, and then everybody but Thug got let out on some kind of plea deal. And so snitching is apparently a hot topic right now. And yeah. again. You know, doing the you know with, with you know doing the underground thing, I feel like that's always been the case. But I have to wonder, like, do you think the underground is gonna take that same like softening stance? You think the underground is gonna go that way? I don't think the underground gives a fuck. I you know mm-hmm. I think that that's I think that I agree with that, and I don't because I think that a lot of underground interests could give a fuck less about any of that shit. But yeah. what I've noticed now is that a lot of underground heads, it's easier to keep up with the underground and everything else at the same time because it's different 
feeds on the same thing, but you're looking basically at the same apps for the same shit. Whereas when we were younger, if you wanted to know about some music, like you had to like dedicate yourself to listening to it. Like you had to go out of your way to find all of it. That was actually one of the reasons why the internet was great in the beginning because you could find deep cuts and shit that you couldn't get at the record store because they just didn't have certain albums. And you know, yeah. like that. So I just, I, I, I think, oh, no, 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 no. I think the six nine thing. Uh, and I, I, I hate to be this guy because I love Snoop and I love, you know, a lot of these classic motherfuckers. But they're, you know, how much of this is now because we just live in the Internet age and we, we can access information. There are legendary uh, uh, stories about, you know, Snoop Dogg being a snitch, uh, Fat Joe being a snitch. And I'm not uh, saying that, no, I actually have not heard. Snoop I've heard, obviously. I'm not uh, saying Joe, I, I I, not, nothing but love and respect to Fat Joe. I think Fat Joe's a beast and a legend. Oh, absolutely. Oh, but percent. there are those there are those stories, you know what I mean? And they've been around for a long ass time. But no, and you part of the reason why I am bringing it up is just because like underground music is a funny place where like you know, I've certainly been guilty of uh, utilizing artistic license on songs and shit, saying things that I wouldn't necessarily do in of real course. life. But I think that there is something to be said about, like, so many kids in the underground, like, this is how you can tell somebody just kind of, like, signing on because they want to be part of something cool and not because it's something they're actually into, is, like, Excuse me. The only shit that you ever seem to hear a lot of these dudes do is just straight up murder rap. Like, oh, I'm just gonna kill shit, and that's gonna be it. Like, there's only so many ways you can murder a motherfucker. But it's also like pretty much any time some shit has gone down, like even in the Juggalo world, where like there have been you know murderers here and there that were like you know well known. Psycho Sam being the most well known among them. But then there's also Jacob Rabita. Um, there were some other kids too, but I can't remember exactly how that one went down. Like pretty much any time that shit happens, people fucking immediately cooperate with the cops. So it's like, yeah, I just I, I find it interesting how people it's, like you, here's know, you the can. Thing, here's the thing: the whole snitching culture. Just because you're a rapper and you say hard shit doesn't mean you can't snitch. And here's why: well, because snitch yeah. culture, snitch culture is street culture. So if you're actually in the street, most rappers aren't. Yeah, 99.9% of rappers are, and they say no snitching, these same rappers who have snitched and shit like that. You know what I mean? It's all horse shit. <laughs> no, for sure. Like, I mean, I, you know, what I will say, though, is that I just, I do think that it's funny because the fact that with hip hop and street culture always having been synonymous, like, it's just funny to me because I mean, we all... it's not anymore. That's the thing. It's not so much uh, well, together okay. anymore. So, all right. There are there are motherfuckers out there uh, who are in the street and in hip hop, but I guarantee you those dudes are mad underground. And you know there might be a few mainstream ones, but ninety nine percent of rappers are not street dudes. Most rappers, I'd say, who are rapping that kind of shit, um, are kind of like Nas. They were the guy who grew up around it that that was me you know what i mean like i never right. fucking went and robbed motherfuckers right. and and all this kind of shit like i was i was observing what i was growing up around i was right. i was telling the story you know no, for sure. Sure. i know i i can a thousand percent did that i again it's i i it, i couldn't even say that i had seen so much because it's not like i was raised around it i kind of brought myself around it but I definitely, you know, I had seen some things here and there where, for me, I always thought that it was good just so that I was able to say that I was aware of that actual part of the world, as opposed right. to, like, so many people, white people a lot of the time, they always have this, like, oh, you know, I feel so bad about, you know, like, what happens to, um, you know, minorities in this country. But, white people. Yeah, exactly. But the reality of it is, like... When you've been, when you've seen the, the trenches, so to speak, even if you weren't there full time, if you've never even seen it from a distance, you know that every, it's everybody in. There. So it's like there's no like 
I, again, I think that with underground music, it was weird how it happened where... I honestly think it has a lot to do with how it's easier and cheaper to be a rapper now. I really do. I really yeah. think that a big part of how that all came about is that, like, so many of these artists in the new age, they're all well-known, like Billie Eilish, is a perfect example. Now, granted, they built, like, a straight-up, legit studio in the house, but they recorded everything there. Like, they just learned how to do it. They just did it from there. And... For rap and shit, that was like you've been able to do it for a while, but the quality was shit until like I mean, if we're being honest here, like let's say maybe 10, 15 years ago, yeah, like roughly when it was you know, like when it started to be like more viable to even if you were gonna put the money in, you could actually do it that way. So I just I think that it's interesting the way that everything has gone because I put it to you like this. Uh, the reason why I bring the snitching thing up is because in noticing that, I just, it really does make me feel like hip hop as a whole really has come very far from where it originally had started. Like, the idea of somebody like 6 9 being able to be like continuously famous after openly snitching and then making a video, his first video once he came out with a fucking mouse emoji on his face. Like, totally wearing that shit on his shoulder. Like, yep, yeah, that's me. Well, and here, here's the thing. Sorry to interrupt you. Here's the Not thing. Um, yes, definitely, bro. If you were coming up in the 90s or the, the, the 80s and, and you were pulling that shit, you, you'd you have no career whatsoever. So and definitely, what I'm saying. definitely modern times plays into this. Yes. Um, but here, here, here's also the thing about six nine specifically, is right. this this dumb fuck. Yes, he is a genius as far as marketing and taking that snitch thing and and getting billions of views on it, right? But I mean, if you look at him now, like nobody's talking about six nine. You know what I mean? He hasn't released a music video in nine fucking months, a year or something like that. Now, people do still, you know, talk about 6 9 when they're talking about what we're talking about. Snitches and what is hip-hop now. That much is cool. And that kind of shit. If, he, if he's not able to take this and turn it into other businesses, his rap career is done. Well, no, that's for sure. I don't know. I took some posts from him the other day. You know, he's flaunting his money and shit, but that's all for visuals. Nobody, who fucking knows what's real in that situation? I, like, yeah. to me... I just, I look at, no, it's, I, I think that the only difference now between underground rappers and mainstream rappers is just how much money you have behind the operation. Not even necessarily, because there was a time back in the day where you could put all kinds of money into your project and still kind of, you know, receive lukewarm reception, you know, like, which that's not to say that it can't still happen that way, but. I think that nowadays, if you have the money to put into the production, because videos, merch, um, beats, uh, web domains, all that different kind of shit, all it really comes down to is money at this point, because none of these things are like, you don't have to know anybody to get any of that shit anymore. Like yeah. really good beats, that's really easy to find. Uh, good production, also very easy to find. Well, you, you can make an album for absolutely fucking nothing compared oh, to yeah. in the 90s where they were spending a mil on an album and the shit would oh, flop. Yeah. And, and then they would have to drop you because your shit flopped and they spent a million dollars on you. That, yeah, none of, that, well, yeah, none exactly. of that's necessary. Now, now they'll kick you down a million dollars if you already have a giant following that's guaranteed to... Yeah, to oh yeah. Shit is definitely well, but so think about it though. From back then, you know, a million dollars, the amount of money that it would cost to like shoot a video. Is, well, no, not only just for the video, but for the if you're gonna make any merchandise, if you're gonna do any traveling, if you're gonna do any touring, if you're gonna, you know, the tour, that's gonna cost money. The fucking the the crew and the equipment and all that kind of shit. Like trying to do that on your own. It like at that point you understand why people would want to go after a record deal anyway but nowadays it's totally different like we, we live in the world where instead of getting a taxi you can get an uber you know what i mean like you don't need to do things the way that they were always done just because that institution exists you can just yeah. pick yourself pick your shit up and do it yourself if you want to 
So yeah. I with and it's funny because with underground music it's very much been a double edged blade because on well, one we, hand we, we also we also uh, uh, this could be a whole other episode. We yeah, need no, to, I, we need to define what underground is because what motherfuckers out, motherfuckers out here think just because you got two fans on Spotify you're an underground artist. But they, right. but but they're sounding like fucking uh, uh, all their shit sounds like Drake. You well, know so what listen, I mean? This is this is what I'll say. I quite frankly, being that we're just <coughs> being that we're just kind of going off the cuff anyway. We're only 15 minutes in. I think that's like a, a very good dis, uh, discussion because that's kind of what I was just saying, which is, in my opinion, it's a cross section between how much money you have to spend on it and how much desire you have to make it happen. Because if you have a ton of desire to make it happen, you're willing to put in the sweat equity, you're willing to do the long hours, long drives, you know, risky expenditure on, you know, the, the, you know production, merch, whatever. If you're willing to do that, I think that's very underground. Because I think that if, but on the on the flip side of that, I also think that you can be kind of underground or kind of in the underground domain if you have a ton of money to put towards it, but it's just kind of something that you're doing. Like, it doesn't seem to be like, like, because I've seen so many artists now over the last few years where like they pop up out of nowhere they're independent and they gain like a little bit of a following and they just never hear from them again so it's like i feel like oliver tree is almost in that realm but he's like closer to mainstream at this point um i don't know if you ever heard of ash nico she's kind of in that direction i don't know what the fuck she's been doing for a while but like that was weird too just her style in general i don't know i think that Underground has more to do with your desire to make it happen than it does what actually happened. Because well, would, me, that be, would that be would that be independent or underground or are they? Oh, no, the same well, I thing? think I think in this case, I think independent and underground kind of go hand in hand because I think that in, in this day and age, like underground labels it's kind of like i don't know that is a weird i mean i guess because <laughs> if you have a label working with you but that label has almost no resources then i mean the results are going to kind of be underground in most cases anyway you know what i mean because it's not gonna it's rare to be able to get that reach without well, having you resources can, you can you can come into the game and be totally totally independent right and you're right. financing you're financing all your own shit you're financing uh uh ad time on youtube you got tons of money for adsense tom mcdonald right uh that dude came he out also, of he nowhere. also capitalized on fucking um he also capitalized on fucking why can't i mm -hmm. think of the right word uh, controversy. He capitalized yeah, controversy. On controversy. yeah. But at the same time, I would never call him an underground. He sounds, to me, underground is more the way you sound. You know what I mean? It's more of a right, sound. You know I think that, I think there's validity to what you're saying. But what I would have said in Tom McDonald's case, unfortunately, because whether or not you like the dude, he can rap. It's, I, I, you know, I don't personally like his shit. I really don't. But he can put words together. He he is able to rhyme. He is, he is certainly better now than he was two years ago at putting words but, together. But well, so interesting story. It was pretty well held for a long time that Tom McDonald didn't write his own shit. That uh, Nova wrote a ton of it. But it was also like here's the problem. Just based on the way he was doing shit for a while, he was underground for a while. Like, like that's for a fact. But he did something that when he started making these videos, and it's still so weird to me that it happened this way because he's Canadian and he has all this shit to say about what Americans should and shouldn't do. But fucking, he was definitely, and here's the sad part about this. He was definitely trying to play that troll role. Like he was definitely trying to rile people up. He didn't give a fuck if you didn't like what he was talking about. So he was well. He was ready to take that to the fucking take that to the wall. But 
I also happen to know that somebody I'm very close to that I have a lot of respect for knew him before he was popular or knew him before he was really popular. And apparently there was some kind of shit that went down where basically he did a really, really big favor, possibly financial to this guy. And it's, it seems like he is potentially a really solid person, but I would also argue that it's really difficult with shit like that because a lot of people that listen to that shit that get into it, I don't think the majority of them are intelligent enough to understand which part is satire and which part is serious. And they, because that to me, no bullshit, like I'm not gonna get political and whatnot, but that was what I, the, the bad part about Trump, that's what I think it was, is that most people were too fucking stupid to understand that there was layers to the shit that he was saying. They take it at face value and then just think, this is what I think up and down and that's it. And that there's right. no fucking, there's no nuance. Well, I mean, that's why, that's why you realize when you're talking about the normie crowd, the normal motherfuckers, like yeah. everyone, takes, everyone takes everything at face value. No one looks into anything. It really is kind of crazy how much people don't investigate the things that they hear or read between the lines on what they're told. Like, and with, with Tom McDonald, like, I don't even know if he believes what the fuck he's saying. I, I, I'm sure he does to some mean. degree. I'm sure he does to some degree. But just like, you know, we're both in the underground. He was kicking around in the underground. Um, I've talked to Nova before he was blowing up. Me and Nova right, were supposed right. to do some shit because I, to this day, I think Nova's better than he is. As a I knew people, well, no. So number one, there's that. But number two, um, apparently, I can't remember who it was that was saying it, but somebody was hating on, uh, they hating on Tom for the fact that it was like well known that R.A. was, uh... Yeah, that was, uh, what's his name when they beefed, uh, fucking Mac, Mac Lethal. Man, that was, you wanna know what? That was a funny situation where this is something that I've noticed, which is one of the main reasons why I always, as much as humanly possible, uh, excuse me, do not give a fuck about what it is that people say, is that... I watched that whole beef happen in real time. And I remember when it happened, personally, I think Mac Lethal served the fuck out of Tom McDonald, like, lyrically, and on some real shit. Like, I think he fucking served it all the way up and down. But, yeah. I think that the general popular belief would be that Mac Lethal lost that battle. And the reason being is Tom made a little bit more of like his disc video was a little bit more glitzy and a little bit more well edited it wasn't just Mac rapping at the fucking camera which is what he's known for so it was like and it's, it's very two, it's, it, it's funny because it's two of the corniest motherfuckers and I respect I, I respect Mac Lethal I do I do I find his videos entertaining but he's a cornball you know I, what I, mean? I think that he is he does have a little bit of that corny energy to him. I'll definitely give you that. If you're going on Ellen, you're a cornball. Uh, well, okay, fair enough. But I also happen to know that he trains, like, ruthlessly in uh, jiu-jitsu and MMA. And that... I don't care. He, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't care. Fair enough. And this is not... I, well, no, okay, so my thing is that I remember him from the like you know from the battle circuit like KOTD and shit yeah and that to me I'm not like, saying I'm not saying I don't got respect for I got mad respect for Mac Lethal I just find him uh, of what he's been doing the last few years and he's he's he found a lane and this is not hate but he is mad his lane just happens to be the mad corny lane <laughs> hey you want to know what what I will say at this point is I know that he's got a family and I'll tell you right now, if I was in a position in my life where I had yeah, been I'm making rap, him. I'm not even hating him for it. If I, if I was at that point, I would, I could imagine going the same direction. However, I will say that I think that 
hip hop and rock and roll in general is not the same as it was. And I say that because you remember, you know Bill Hicks, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Okay, so he does the whole bit about like, fuck that, I want my rock stars dead. Like, oh, why is he, why is he not bubbling out of, shut up and listen to him play. I don't think we really have rock stars like that anymore. Like, there are some people at the highest levels, like The Weeknd or Drake or fucking Eminem yeah, or whatever. Even, even them, are they rock stars? The, the only that, real rock star still around is Marilyn Manson, because that motherfucker will go around, waste it off his ass, and fucking do crazy shit. That's the only real well, rock so star. That, I actually thought that because of the whole case that he had going on, that he was a little just more chilled back in the days, uh, you know, lately, but... No, I, what I'm that saying case, is that case, real quick, real quick. That case just got dismissed, by the way. Everybody reads the article or everybody reads the headline. Nobody yeah, reads the retraction. And so I've seen a lot of people that are still very much like, um, oh, fuck Marilyn Manson. He's an abuser, this and that. And I think it's very interesting just in the world that we live in. Guilty where before innocent. People you got to you prove you're innocent. Well, not even just guilty before innocent, but the fact that once you have been accused in some people's eyes you can't be proven innocent because again like you said the case was dismissed he was dismissed of charges but there are going to be people that are going to say oh he probably bought it with his celebrity or bought it with his money or it wasn't fair somehow they're saying the same shit about johnny depp it's like at a certain point if people are going to indict you that's why i'm saying right they, you should never spend too much time worried about what other people have to say about you because unless they're people that you respect, and they're people you respect, you probably already have had the conversation with them to begin with. But if it's somebody you respect, it's not going to be some kind of like hateful comment. Yeah. Like people think that people think that they're being fucking truthful just because they're being unfiltered. That's not the same. Right. And and in the in the era where you can literally fucking Google anything. Yeah. People are still going to be like, well, no, he's guilty. You know what I mean? Without, he never, they never went to trial. It was never a fucking, you know what I mean? It was never a legit thing. And in this world we live in, people are still want to hold on to that. I do not understand the mentality right there. Well, you want to know what? I think that everybody wants, especially in today's age where information is so easy to come by, Everybody wants information to give them a confirmation bias. They want something or they have a confirmation bias and they're looking for something to satisfy. They want something that somebody else said to be able to, oh, well, but see, see, this person said it too. And it's like, it gets to a point where I think that, I don't know. And it's, Funny, really, this is kind of the way it's always been as far as, like... Well, well I don't know, because now, media, every, everyone wants to feel validated because everyone feels like okay. their voice is important because they're on social media. And social media, especially Twitter and shit, has the power to bring motherfuckers down. And everyone wants to be a part of a movement. You know what I mean? Oh, and, 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 and nobody realizes your fucking opinion doesn't matter, dickhead. This is what I think. I was uh, saying this to my mother the other day. I honestly think that it has something to do with... We had been conditioned as human beings over the last, like, 30, 40, 50 years, something like that, to accept the things that we see on the screen as real to some degree. It's either news or it's a movie, or a TV show, or a talk show, or whatever it is, on the TV, like that was the old joke back in the day, it was on TV, it has to be true. Right. So, at that point, I really do think that it is the human psychology that we have these things, these little rectangles in our pockets, that fucking are literally a portal to the entire planet. The whole yeah. planet. You're in California, right? We could be yep. talking to somebody in Australia right now at the same time if we wanted. And somebody fucking somebody from every tra every time zone practically. So the fact that we can now look at this device where we can see news, where we can see movies, where we can see all of this other shit, 
excuse me, we can also see the shit that we say. We can also see the fucking nonsense that we think is important that we just have to fucking tell everybody else. Like, it really is a little bit crazy at a certain point, the self-importance that people have where I, you know, let me, I will say this. As a rapper, it's kind of tricky because, I mean, I have the way that I feel about the things that I believe. And, you know, like, I feel like I it's worthwhile and I have, you know, an artistic approach to do it. But, like, that's the whole thing. Being a rapper really is just this whole, like, look at me fucking thing. It is. And so, like, it's very interesting how that breaks down. Uh... I mean, because there's, uh, yeah, cause that's just performers in fucking general, like comedians and dancers. Yeah, but we also we also talking about burying eight motherfuckers in a single song. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, you want to know what though? See, here's the pro- here's my problem with that is when Scorsese makes a movie and Joe Pesci's brains get fucking blown out. Or he beat somebody, some dude, so brutally that the fucking revolver gets broken. You know what I mean? That's not looked at as, that's looked at as, oh, that's an unflinching look at the real world, the the underbelly of crime. And the thing is, the underground has a lot of people that have really seen a lot of that shit. In my case, it was never that I had seen it, it was that I I had been around people that had seen it. But fucking... Dude, I saw I saw I saw my father take a tire iron to somebody. <laughs> you God, know what hey. I mean? <laughs> and a tire iron, that's like a fucking crowbar. That is the Yeah, yeah. He, I don't I, I don't believe that person ever walked again. I could believe it, depending on what fucking appendix he caught contact with the tire iron. <laughs> that sounds like something that you if they are intending, you are probably well, you're probably not walking away from that. But no, and you wanna know what, just to, to tie it all back. I, it's just funny to me because I've said this before in underground rap and just watching people talk about shit in the fucking in the community here and there it's like it, murders are things that people hear about when somebody gets murdered in the community it's a major fucking situation so like like people talk a lot about it there was this one kid may he rest in peace his name was Wiley Flu I don't know exactly what happened to the kid but I'm pretty sure he was walking down a highway and then he was like on his way somewhere. I don't know exactly what happened. And then he was murdered and he went back, you know, walking down that highway. And when it happened, the underground was beside itself with grief. Like, this is fucking horrible. This dude is gone. It's, like, it's senseless. It's out of nowhere. And it's just, it's funny when you look at the kind of subject matter that so many of these dudes rely on and fucking, it's, the, it's, it's almost their entire identity. Is, is, you know, like this wickedness and darkness and shit. And it's like, it's always just been very odd to me, the idea of being authentic about your shit. And the underground is very weird. Like, like that's another thing about the underground because technically speaking, that dude with two listeners on Spotify or whatever, think about the internet nowadays with sound click and shit, there's a lot of uh, but, but see, here's stuff. going back to my point is underground, if, if you're trying to sell it, sound like everything on the radio and you have no originality to you even in the slightest and you can't fucking spit a bar you're not underground to me, that's my own personal definition, you know what I mean and it's very, it's very weird because what is underground hip hop you know what I mean, it's 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 a lot, most people look at it oh if you're not popping you're underground you know what i mean but i i don't care if you have no fans if you're trying to sound like drake and you you don't know anything about underground hip hop are you are you an underground hip hop artist yeah no we are dead no listen so we are definitely going to have to uh figure out the uh the technicals going forward to make sure that uh, I'm uh, honestly i think i have a uh, webcam somewhere around here. Yeah, well, well, we're gonna fix it going. But yeah, well, going well, we're gonna fix it going. No, but, going the, but so this is what I'm saying because I do agree. I think that even the, like the, even if you're underground by proxy, if you're taking the time to like get yeah. artwork done and go like you know get legit beats and go to a studio and do things correctly, 
then I think that I don't think that there's a lot of rappers out right now that weren't like famous to begin with that are like bat rappers that are like really popping like that. Like, I haven't heard a boom bap track like that on the radio that wasn't a throwback in longer than... I mean, those dudes, Griselda, all those Griselda dudes. Well, yeah, no, that, but the thing, though, is I feel like those guys have kind of become the last bastion of that shit. But then there's also the fact that I just seen Conway talking about he's done this year. No, so anyway, I think that, like, underground rap is the kind of thing where community is different. Like, there's a lot of music out there, like just regular music, but like underground rap has this like, you're either doing it completely by yourself or like, here's a good example. Do you think Jedi Mind Tricks is underground? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so then at that point, I think the conversation has to become, there are levels to the underground because Jedi Mind Tricks is pretty well known, but I do concede the idea that they still are underground bands yeah, the same yeah, like yeah, Nitro. There's levels to this, levels you know what I mean? And, and, and Jedi Mind, right below the top right below. I think that Tech Nine sound is really unique, and I think that it's like, there's not really a lot of others doing it like him, but I think the only thing that really makes him underground at that point is the fact that he's still independent. Because technically speaking, they don't get money from anybody else except Travis, but Travis has a 